Welcome to the Rosny College Electronics series of videos. This video will be about the discovery and early history of electro electricity and introducing some fundamental concepts. In about 600 BC, the Greeks realised that amber, which is fossilised tree sap, had some interesting properties. It could make your hair stand up on end and pick up some light objects, or even generate a spark if rubbed in a certain way. Here is an example of a very large spark caused by the same phenomenon that we now know as static electricity. It wasn't until the late 19th century that we started to really understand what was behind these phenomena. J.J. Thompson theorised that an atom consisted of two types of particle, one positively charged and the other negatively charged. These were spread evenly throughout the atom in what is known as the plum pudding model. Ernest Rutherford later performed experiments that showed this to be inaccurate, beginning the development of the orbital model of the atom with a very small, positively charged and heavy nucleus, and with negatively charged and light particles called electrons in orbits around it. This was further developed by Niels Bohr, Niels Bohr in the early 20th century, paving the way to our modern understanding of the atom. Here is a much simplified diagram showing this Charge is a difficult concept to describe well, however it can be said that any charged particles will feel the force of attraction or, or repulsion to another charged particle. Some charges repel, whereas same charges repel, whereas opposite charges attract. Charged particles have an electric field associated with them, and more formally it is the interaction of these fields that provide the forces we see. Magnetism is also related to charged particles, and we'll explore this further in another video. An electric current is where charged particles are moving. In metals, it is the electrons that move. Metals are different than nonmetals because some of the electrons in each atom become dissociated. This means that these electrons do not belong to any one particular atom, rather they are shared between all metal atoms in that particular piece of metal. They are known as delocalized electrons and provide the metal with many of its properties such as luster, or the shiny metallic look that we see, malleability, which is its ability to be bent or shaped without breaking, or its ability, uh, and more importantly for us, it can conduct electricity as a solid. If a particle with excess charge is placed near a metal, the electrons are repelled or attracted depending on which charge it is, and move accordingly. This has the effect of containing the electric field associated with that particle, allowing us to use it. If electrons are continuously moving, as in a circuit, we have an electric current. You can think of it in similar terms to water moving in a hose. I'll be using the water analogy quite often to describe electricity concepts, however it should be noted that it does not always explain the whole story. Next video I'll be looking at basic circuits and what current voltage and resistance means in that context. 